When we look at Earth today, with its forests, oceans, mountains, and endless sky, it's hard to imagine that all this beauty was once a lifeless wasteland. No sound, no movement, no breath, only fire, stone, and silence. But in that silence, deep beneath the layers of primordial waters, something was taking shape. Something that would change the planet forever. The path from the first trembling sparks of life to the mighty beasts that ruled the continents was not just long, it was dramatic, perilous, and full of mysteries. Who would have thought that tiny organisms, invisible to the eye, would one day give rise to creatures the size of buses, with wings casting shadows over entire forests? That flashes of extinction would lead to new rises, and the greatest catastrophes would mark the beginning of new eras. This story isn't about imaginary worlds. It's about our home. About Earth. The one we know, yet still don't fully understand. And if you're curious to find out how it all began, who the first hero of evolution was, and why everything could have turned out completely differently, subscribe and hit the like button. Life on Earth began under conditions that today seem hostile and uninhabitable. More than 3.5 billion years ago during the Archean era, a time of unstable surfaces, an oxygen-free atmosphere and boiling oceans, life first emerged. In these primordial waters appeared the first living organisms, simple prokaryotes, anaerobic heterotrophs that fed on organic compounds formed through abiogenic processes. Over time, resources became scarce and competition among organisms intensified, driving evolution forward. Around three billion years ago, autotrophs appeared, organisms capable of synthesizing organic matter on their own. Cyanobacteria played a particularly crucial role by initiating photosynthesis and releasing oxygen. This event marked a turning point. The atmosphere began to accumulate oxygen, paving the way for aerobic forms of life. It was during the Archean era that the foundations of all subsequent evolution were laid. The emergence of life, the first nutritional strategies, and the beginning of Earth's atmospheric transformation. But what came next? What exactly triggered the rapid emergence of almost all known animal types in such a remarkably short period of time? About 540 million years ago, the Earth was shaken by a unique event that entered history as the Cambrian Explosion. In a relatively short geological period, around 20 to 25 million years, all major animal types known to modern science appeared in the seas, from arthropods and mollusks to echinoderms and canidarians. It was a biological burst that changed the face of the planet forever. Prior to this, life mainly consisted of simple multicellular forms. But the Cambrian opened the doors to a world of predators, armor, limbs, and complex sensory organs. Almost every type of body structure we know today formed during this time. This sharp leap in diversity initially baffled even the English naturalist Charles Darwin. He believed that such an evolutionary explosion should have left behind an extensive series of transitional forms traces of which were barely preserved in the geological record. Modern scientists, armed with new methods and data, have come to a deeper understanding of the causes of this phenomenon. American paleontologists, for example, propose two main hypotheses. The first explains the decline of such intense evolutionary activity by suggesting that modern ecology is too stable, not allowing new, unconventional forms to survive. The second states that over time, Animals' genomes developed a stability mechanism that restrained excessive changes, acting as a kind of defense against biological chaos. However, the study of echinoderms, a group that flourished at the beginning of the Paleozoic, provides a more complex picture. Scientists constructed a hierarchical matrix of morphological features to track how the body plans of these creatures changed over time. It turned out that the diversity of forms did not disappear after the Cambrian explosion, but continued to evolve. Numerous traits continued to evolve, even after tens of millions of years and convergent evolution, the development of similar traits in different lines, only masked this dynamic. This means that the organisms themselves maintained evolutionary plasticity, the ability to change, 
adapt, and invent new solutions. The Cambrian explosion was not a one-time act of creation, but rather a special moment when everything aligned. Oxygen in the atmosphere reached a critical level. Ecosystems became more complex. Predators appeared. The need for protection arose, and natural selection worked at full capacity. Since then, life has not experienced such large-scale transformations, not because it couldn't, but because the conditions had changed. But the Cambrian remains the turning point when the oceans were first filled with numerous fantastic creatures, trilobites, anomalocarids, ancient mollusks, the first masters of the seas. Why, during the Carboniferous period, did the oxygen level in the atmosphere reach a record 35%? And what role did imperfect fungi play in this? What allowed the first reptiles to leave the wet swamps and move to dry areas? And who was the most fearsome predator of the freshwater swamps during the Carboniferous? The Carboniferous period, the fifth stage of the Paleozoic era, spanning from 359 to 299 million years ago, was a pivotal moment in the evolution of life on land. Four-legged animals firmly established themselves outside of aquatic environments, acquiring pentadactyl limbs, while amphibians became the dominant group of vertebrates, thriving in the warm and humid climate. It was also during this time that the first amniotes appeared, giving rise to synapsids, the ancestors of mammals, and sauropsids, the ancestors of modern reptiles and birds. The animal world continued to evolve rapidly. Insects exhibited significant diversity, reflecting their swift adaptation to terrestrial environments. The land was covered by dense forests of tree-like fern species, such as Sigillaria, Lepidodendron, Calamites, and Storagin, forming humid ecosystems that later became major coal deposits. The atmosphere of the period was characterized by a high oxygen content, up to 35%, significantly higher than today's levels. This can be attributed to the fact that dead plants, particularly trees, did not fully decompose as fungi and microorganisms lacked the necessary enzymes to break down lignin in wood. Carbon was retained in swampy conditions, accumulating as peat and future coal. It was only towards the end of the Carboniferous that fungi capable of decomposing lignin emerged, altering the carbon cycle. Marine life was rich and diverse. Fusulinids, bryozoans, brachiopods, corals, crinoids, and ancient sea urchins thrived in the waters. Among mollusks, gastropods, nautiloids, and ammonoids were widespread. The seas were populated by large cartilaginous fish, such as sharks and brachydontes, with some species, like Campidus, reaching lengths of up to 13 meters. Freshwater environments were home to and evolved with coelacanths, including Ripidistia, and large predatory amphibians, such as Rhizodonts, which grew up to 8 meters. Amphibians saw considerable species diversification. For instance, the large Eogirinus, up to 4.5 meters, led a lifestyle akin to modern alligators. In contrast, the tiny microbrachius, no more than 15 centimeters in length, fed on zooplankton. Some species like Brachiosaurus retained gills, while others, such as Sauropleura and Cinchosaurus, resembled modern newts. One of the earliest land predators, Pederpes, appeared, capable of moving confidently on land. There were also rare groups, such as lepospondyls, loxomatids, and microsaurians, adding to the diversity of life. Reptiles emerged in the early Carboniferous. Early forms, such as West Lothiana, lived near water, but gradually began to occupy drier land areas, avoiding competition with amphibians and aquatic predators. This expansion of habitat was made possible by the advent of seed plants, which could reproduce without the need for water. Life flourished in the warm swamps. A wide variety of insects thrived, from giant cockroaches to enormous dragonflies and mayflies. The underbrush was populated by giant arthropods, such as Arthropleura, and large scorpions, like Pulmonoscorpius, which grew up to one meter in length. Alongside them, spiders and the ancestors of ticks were present. Coastal plains continued to accumulate plant material, 
which formed rich deposits of peat and coal. The Carboniferous did not witness major extinctions. Only certain groups of marine organisms, cephalopods, echinoderms, and graptolites, disappeared. Overall, it was a period of flourishing biodiversity and active adaptation of life to terrestrial conditions. How might the eruptions of the Siberian traps have contributed to a mass extinction? And what does this reveal about the fragility of Earth's ecosystems? Why were amniotes able to diversify in the Permian Desert while amphibians did not survive? And how does this impact our understanding of animal evolution? The Permian period marks the end of the Paleozoic era, lasting from 298.9 to 251.9 million years ago. It concluded with the largest mass extinction event in Earth's history, the Permian-Triassic extinction, wiping out 81% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species. The cause was linked to the eruption of the Siberian traps. The recovery of the biosphere took approximately 30 million years. During the Permian, therapsids, reptiles, and synapsids, the ancestors of mammals, thrived. After the disappearance of Carboniferous forests, deserts replaced tropical ecosystems, where amniotes outcompeted amphibians. The supercontinent Pangaea, formed earlier in the Carboniferous period, dominated the Earth. The climate became more arid and zonal, resembling the modern climate. Wet belts were found near the Tethys Ocean and in the southern part of Gondwana, where coal accumulation continued. To the north, dry and hot conditions prevailed, leading to the formation of salt and red bed deposits. Glaciation, which began in the Carboniferous, persisted on southern continents during the early Permian. Atmospheric CO2 initially rose from 250 to 1,000 parts per million, then to 3,000 parts per million. In the Acelian stage, around 295 million years ago, iron content in the dust of northern and central Iran was twice the level seen today, stimulating the growth of marine photosynthesizing organisms. Among insects, beetles appeared around 270 million years ago, mostly belonging to the Archistemata order, along with Neuropterans, Caddisflies, and Scorpionflies. By the end of the Permian, 11 families of Scorpionflies were known, but only four made it into the Triassic, and only one family of Caddisflies survived. What could have triggered such a rapid rise in atmospheric oxygen over just three million years, and how did it affect the development of life? Could the massive volcanic eruptions of the Triassic have indeed foreshadowed the climate crisis of the 21st century. Why were ancient reptiles able to survive the mass extinction while the flourishing plants of the time did not? The Triassic period, the first of the Mesozoic era, began approximately 251.9 million years ago and ended around 201.3 million years ago, lasting about 51 million years. It followed the Permian and preceded the Jurassic with deposits from this time forming the Triassic system. During this period, the climate was characterized by overall warming, which led to the drying of inland seas and an increase in salinity in remaining bodies of water. Climate zonality weakened and temperature differences between regions were smoothed out. The concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere ranged from 10 to 15%, but around 215 million years ago, it increased to 19% over a relatively short period. In the middle of the Triassic, the Carnian pluvial event occurred, an important climatic event that took place on the supercontinent Pangaea. By the end of the Triassic, approximately 100,000 gigatons of carbon dioxide were released into the atmosphere as a result of volcanic activity comparable to the expected emissions of the 21st century, leading to significant warming and ocean acidification on land, seed ferns predominated, although gymnosperms, including cycads, ginkgos, and conifers, also spread widely. The plant cover largely inherited characteristics from the late Permian, but tree-like lycopods and calamites, as well as tree ferns and chordates, disappeared. Among the dominant forms were dipterid ferns, cycads, benetites, ginkgos, conifers of mesophytic type, and horsetails. In the late Triassic, there was a mass extinction of about half of all land plants. 
The fauna of the period was diverse, especially among reptiles such as notosaurs, ichthyosaurs, placodonts, sclerosaurs, and thalatosaurs. Among amphibians, labyrinthodonts stood out, including mastodonsaurus. In the marine fauna, ceratites, bivalves, nautiloids predominated, and new mollusk forms appeared, including belemnites and oysters. The largest predators were aquatic species, while the diversity of vertebrates decreased. On land, early archosauriforms, mobile land reptiles, dominated, from which more specialized archosaurs evolved, including birds, crocodiles, and dinosaurs. By the end of the period, egg-laying mammals and the hypothetical ancestor of birds, Protoavis, appeared. Forms from the Permian period, such as labyrinthodonts, Catylosaurs and therapsids survived. In the Triassic, a biota was formed, represented by more than 20 orders of animals, including sponges, characteristic of earlier periods, and cephalopod mollusks, characteristic of the Jurassic. By the end of the era, one-fourth of all marine animals became extinct. Insect development was uneven. Neuropterans gradually increased their species diversity. At the beginning of the Triassic, Terrestrial beetles were not observed, although they were widespread in the Permian. In the Middle Triassic, half-winged insects, aquatic beetles, dragonflies and mayflies flourished. In the Late Triassic, dipterans and the first hymenopterans appeared, represented by the family Cielidae, many species of which disappeared in the Jurassic. Panorpidae and Orthophlebiinae were widespread, as well as Permocoristidae, now entirely extinct. The existence of orthopterans with sound-producing structures on the forewings to attract females was established. At this time, one family of dragonflies also went extinct. At the boundary between the Triassic and Jurassic, a sharp decline in insect diversity was observed, synchronous with marine extinction, although the main changes in composition occurred already in the late Triassic. The history of life on Earth is not just a series of catastrophes and victories, but also a testament to the incredible resilience and adaptability of life itself. From the first single-celled organisms to the giants of the Carboniferous swamps, from extinctions to new dawns, all of this is part of one great saga in which we are not mere observers, but direct heirs. If you're interested in such captivating journeys into the depths of time, evolutionary mysteries, and twists that have changed the course of history, Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for updates. Many more amazing discoveries lie ahead.